early months of 2019, I planned a trip across the Scottish Islands. A trip that would take me from the city of Glasgow to the small, remote coastal town of Inveree. The route was to take me across countless mountain ranges, cross multiple streams and rivers, and push the limits of what I thought I was capable of. It's snowing heavily, and someone needs an ice cream. And despite a great deal of trepidation and uncertainty, in the early weeks of March, I found myself loading my bicycle with food and equipment and venturing out in search of adventure. Would you look at that? After packing up my tent, I was eager to reach the trail to discover what this landscape had to offer. Ah, sure, f*** it. Seems like it'll be fun. The first hours of the trip passed without incident on flowing, smooth, single track. Sadly, this was not to last, as my progress was slowed as the trail became harder and harder to ride until I was eventually reduced to carrying the bicycle over rocks and scrambling over rubble. Whatever motherfucker thinks that this and this and all of this is a mountain bike trail or even a hiking trail for that matter. This sh is mad. Beautiful night. I planned this trip as an exercise in self-reliance and isolation, but fate obviously had other ideas. Hello. Hi. <laughs> ah. Sorry, I'll get out of the way. I met a German hiker and I've been hiking alongside with her for the last like hour. No, I really do kind of feel like I'm in a horror movie. It's many hours later, I've recovered from my mental breakdown. I'm here with my friend, <laughs> who I met and saved me from my madness. And um, she's made me tea, and now I'm gonna add some vodka that we found in this bothy. It's actually not bad. I mean, it's really not bad. Um, I might put sugar in it, but... Okay, this is, this is my dinner. It's chicken noodles and uh, another, another cup of tea. Um, we need more vodka, definitely. Well, the stove kind of made my breakfast. I've got, I've got coffee and I've got porridge with nuts in it. And I've got a lot of chocolate, <laughs> which is the most important part of it, I think. Update, my DIY repair to this is actually working quite well, despite it not having very much gas pressure. Update, just the stove is out of control. I mean, it, it's all funny now, but you know, if we all die in this explosion, it'll be less funny. <laughs> well, that doesn't look healthy, but whatever. <laughs> As we appeared to be two of the only people crazy enough to attempt this trail in winter time, we decided we would stick together. After leaving the Bothy late that morning, progress was slow as the trail was washed out and grip and traction were a rarity. Despite that, the trail offered several technical and challenging sections that I enjoyed thoroughly. It's 
raining. I love it. <laughs> Day two. I'm walking my bicycle. It's raining heavily. The sun is going down. And I lost my rain pants yesterday. So I'm, I'm rather cold and rather wet. But, you know, highs and lows. Absolutely amazing scenery. <laughs> it's 20 to 8. We have found a house or a lodge. We were hiking and a rainstorm came in and we got absolutely drenched and it got very cold and it got dark very quickly and we arrived in this town and nothing was open. The youth hostel was full, the lodges were closed and eventually after hiking out of that town carrying my bike and bags and shit, um, we found this place and now we're in this beautiful cabin. We've got like a f***ing bed and a bathroom. It's like 11.30 in the morning on the third day <laughs> and it's raining and it's snowing I think. We're trying to cook the park veg. It's gonna start snowing on my porridge. <laughs> it's snowing outside quite heavily. <laughs> We're in a bus shelter cooking up food. The day began with a steep climb out of the town of Cree and Larrick, up through the forest and up to the snow line. Steep hills. That's the one thing about the West Highland Trail is it seems like it goes up a lot more than it goes down. Dropping in. Whoa, hey. Hailstones are getting really heavy and I'm waiting for my friend Hannah who's hiking the trail. The trail was amazing, um, probably the highlight of the trip so far. Hailstone is pretty real here. <laughs> no. After this we were treated to a winding technical descent through forestry down to the valley floor where the trail continued to the town of Tindrum. Snowing heavily, <laughs> and someone needs an ice cream. <laughs> We're making tea with vodka in it. <laughs> fourth, it's my fourth day in Scotland, and. We pitched the tent on the side of a mountain. Hailstone storm has just rolled in. Let's hope the tent like can hold up to this huge amount of hail that is landing right now. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, what? Frozen inside. <laughs> All our boots are frozen. Yay. Oh wow! Oh, my. <laughs> what the fuck? It's definitely snowing and I need to go to the bathroom. That's my tent there. This is my bicycle. The vents are still kind of open. I'm not gonna lie, that was fairly cold. How are you in there? It's nice, it's warm. It's nice. That's good. It's not out here, I'm not gonna lie. 10 o'clock, we finally managed to motivate ourselves to get up and make breakfast. And we've managed to defrost our, our propane can and uh, we're melting snow. We're up, or at least I'm up. Um, I'm defrosting snow. Defrosting snow? I'm melting snow. We have to have dinner, breakfast, breakfast. I'm having a f***ing stroke, I can't speak. <laughs> well, that's interesting. <laughs> I can't feel my feet or my hands. And Imagine Dragons is playing right now. Hmm. 
After being snowed in and having most of our gear drenched with condensation, we decided we would get a train to Fort William from the next town, where we would have a chance to dry out our equipment before Hannah went home and I continued on to the most challenging part of my trip. Day six, uh, Hannah's getting the bus home, I'm quite careful. And uh, I'm continuing on onto the Noida Peninsula this evening. And there's a storm alert for a potential of 130 kilometer an hour winds. I'm gonna try to get to Wabathi tonight, because if I don't, <laughs> I'm gonna die. <laughs> After buying a few extra layers in Fort William, I set off with the hopes of reaching Abathi by nightfall. But sadly, a headwind and rolling hills for miles quickly put an end to that plan and left me out in the cold, in the rain, in the dark, looking for the Bothy. about another 25 minutes of uh, hiking and a uh, uh, pretty scary moment. Um, I find myself my boppy. I cannot begin to explain the feeling of relief I experienced upon finding that elusive boppy. Or the comfort and relief that can be found by sitting by a warm fire on a stormy night in the middle of nowhere. Freezing rain, the hail, uh, it was absolutely brutal. But um, yeah, uh, I'm glad to be in this boffy to be honest. I was really beginning to get a bit concerned towards the end about whether or not I was going to have to try to pitch my tent in this storm um, and try to sleep it out. And I'm glad I didn't have to do that because all my gear is soaking wet. I hope that's my bed set up for the night. Fire's burning out, candle, bed. Couldn't be better. <laughs> oh, good morning. I slept like a rock last night. Um, I think I've got like a bit of a, a nagging pain in my, one of my the tendons in the back of one of my legs. And today is probably the biggest day of the trip so far, and pretty much generally it's the biggest day of the trip. On day two, my stove packed up, probably because I tried to use it to light a fire, but um, I've uh, continued messing around with it in the hopes of getting it to work a bit better. I've opened up the air valve, so now it does that. Is that safe? Probably not, but it'll boil water though. It'll boil water real quick. Don't do this at home, kids. This is a really bad idea. With the help of some tools here and some needles that I brought for stitching up clothes, um, I managed to clear the blockage in the stove that was preventing it from running properly. And let's hope that uh, it continues working as well as it does now. In the meantime, I'm going to eat about two tons of porridge and about five cups of coffee, and then I'm going to try to climb those mountains. And here is my gift to whoever may want it. That bottle of vodka and this half-empty gas canister are my donations to the Bothy. Thank you for a wonderful night. As I left the Bothy that morning, my spirits were high, and my hopes for the day were optimistic to say the least. My aim reached the small coastal town of Inveree on the Noidart Peninsula. Only thing standing between me and Inveree were 25 kilometers of the most rugged, wild and unforgiving terrain that I have ever experienced, with mountain tops reaching up over a kilometer into the sky It's definitely raining, and I'm very glad to have these waterproofs on. Good. The first few kilometers of the trip pass without incident, on smooth, if muddy, double track. Well, that's the end of the, uh, the double track. We're really beginning to get a bit scared, but nothing to be done about it now except do it. As I reached the open mountainside, the terrain became considerably less forgiving. Rideable might have been an overstatement. Mm. 
Okay, I take it back. Nothing here is rideable. Nothing. Every time I think I reach a rideable section, there's just patches of mud. When I go into them, the wheel goes about a foot deep and it stops moving. And I struggle to stay on the bike. Holy moly. I took a break from hiking the bike to get up onto this viewing point to take a look of where I'm going. And it's really not filling me with confidence because it's steep. As I slowly pushed the bicycle kilometer after kilometer, I very quickly began questioning whether or not this part of the trip was a good idea. Made it down off the mountain, down to the coastline. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, that last uh, four or five kilometers was pretty rough, especially the descent. It was maybe 15, 20 switchbacks, just back to back. Couldn't ride them, obviously. It was so steep, you could hardly walk down them. My leg is really beginning to give me some serious pain. If I get into the Bothy tonight, I might be able to make Inveree tomorrow. I've probably got enough food to do it, so. I rode all of that in the first day, and now in the second day, I walked from here to here, which is about 12 kilometers. Later on that evening, another hiker arrived in the Bothy. When he saw the bicycle, he exclaimed, what mad bastard brought a bicycle onto this trail? The next morning, we both woke early in the hopes of reaching Inveree by nightfall. The last leg of the trip, all I had to do was push a bicycle 541 meters up a mountain and then ride it down the other side. I don't think we'll be crossing this bridge. We've hiked about a kilometer down the river or up the river uh, and we find what we think is a crossable area. It's gonna be cold. Now we just gotta hike across this. <laughs> I made it! I've been pushing and hauling my bike up these switchbacks for about an hour and 20 minutes. I've gained about 200 meters of elevation, I think. If you look down there, all the way down there, you can see a little like monastery that I passed a while ago. Um, it looked pretty big when I was down there. Not so much now. Very, very tired. My legs hurt. I'm not even halfway up the hill. Dying. It's great. Um, more than two thirds of the way there now. My leg is in absolute agony for every push. But when you realize that it's only five, six kilometers that way to where I need to be, very motivating, I'll say that. Got nothing to do but just push the bike. Get to Inveree or die. I wish that wasn't a joke. So I made the summit, 541 meters above sea level. While the stormy conditions may not have made for the best views, the feeling of euphoria I felt at the top of that pass was unlike anything I'd experienced before. And the descent down to Inveree was among the most exciting and terrifying rides of my life.
might not have ridden the distance or the route that I had initially planned. But I redefined my limits, made new friends. And in the end, all that was left to do was ride home.